During the launch of a visitor satisfaction survey in May this year, Honorable Edmund Castro, Area Representative for Rural North, mentioned the names Wilhelm, Buster Leslie, and Winston Herbert. Minister Castro inspired us to get to know more about these two men and their role in finding the Jade Head. We met Mr. Wilhelm Buster Leslie, or Mr. B, at the archaeological site, and he told us a bit about the history of the place before 1964 and the greatest carved jade find in the Maya world. How we knew this was a ruin? When all over, all the stone come from Rockstone Panya, for full, and the Alova Beach to believe. All the stone come up and they the we dig it, they bring the buck up. The wall. But the whole wall there. Yeah. The man starts to pick up pieces of jade. He said, Lord, he said, look here. Yeah. And I said, Lord, lie. But we never know better. You know when we get for no way that jade? When we the walk, when penal bath come here. Right now, they forgot that the pan. Because then the, the pan be in a mile run. Right there back there. Speaking with both Mr. Leslie and Mr. Winston, they recounted what led up to the finding of the tomb. Remember, when he told us that was in the o'clock that day, when we go home, eat, when we food, and when we come back, we have to dump it. Cover it. That is true. When, me, when you decide to me when me because the full Spanish the me by himself, you told me, Buster, let's go back to me. And when the guy never no time, when you may open the hole, right? Yes. Buster, where because he the work here, the work here. So when the work we part, I don't know how you get somebody is that. Remember the the, the capstone may drop up at the edge. Mm -hmm. And when we say Buster look there, but we couldn't do nothing. So here we be do. Me and he get up back. Said no, the Spanish say no man know nothing. I told him I said go bring the bass man because he don't even look over this thing. Liar too. Uh, he told us that um, after we we come back from food, he look alright. Uh, alright. We never did that. Me and he never did that. You know. We make it there to me and back and we say when we find that. And I found out that was the tomb. Local tour guide Wilfred Garbutt told us about his relation to Mr. B. Mr. Wilhelm Leslie, he is married to my great aunt, Mr. Ms. Gladys Konarke. He spoke about ways in which the two men from Rockstone Pond could be further honored when there is an eventual museum dedicated to Maya heritage, in addition to the certificates they had already been awarded with. Even if not having the two men there, definitely have their story, you know, portraits of, of the people and stuff like that. And I think when the, the locals see that, that you know, that the, the country and BTB and Niche appreciates, you know, these two gentlemen in, in, and, you know, agree to display them and show them in this manner, I think that would kind of boost the community a bit and make them want to do even more. Previously, BTB director Laura Esquivel Frampton spoke about the Making Tourism Benefit Communities adjacent to Archaeological Sites project. In addition to local tour guides, Mrs. Frampton maintained that BTB is also committed to continue working with artisans near to sites. More than retailing solely at the sites, though, BTB's thrust is to have the work branded as Made in Belize and create distribution chains. Mr. Garbutt gave his views on this. That is definitely one aspect of the project that um, you know, I'm really excited about, um, enhancing and marketing the wood carving and um, branding the product. Uh, it's, uh, b being that the three communities that immediately surround the site, which are um, Rockstone Pond, the Lucky Strike and Santana Village, I would say at least 80 to 85 percent of, of the working families depend on the wood carving industry. And you know, it, it would really be, it has been a great opportunity. Um, especially for young people, you know, who are not so, say, academically minded. I mean, we have very young people, you know, starting off, like, say, around 13, 14, you know, carving wood, and you should see, you know, the work that they're producing. And a few years later, you know, they have, you know, they're, they're sustaining themselves and, themselves and their families, you know, carving wood. That's all they do. 
Rather than waiting on Niche or BTB to build awareness of the wood art to be found around Alton Hartho, this 2009 National Youth Awardee is a co-founder of a festival named after the Maya sun god, Kinich Ahau. Um, the Kinich Art Festival that was based on promoting the wood carvers and the wood carving, um, try to you know, create an awareness to take a sustainable approach. Right? Meaning, you know, like um, preserving the trees or you know, replanting the trees that we use in the industry and um, also protecting oneself, you know, personal health and stuff like that. Wilfred also had more ideas on taking the sustainable tourist product forward. One of the things that we talked about doing is setting up a tour of the community where, where people get to see different aspects of the Creole culture, but it would have had a lot to do with reenactments. And I believe that that could be um, a very good thing for, you know, for people who are into the tourism industry, you know, providing um, a service or a product to tourists that, that are interesting, or visitors that are interested in seeing your culture. I think reenactments would be an ideal way of, of you know, Belize showing and depicting its culture to visitors. Reenactment of what took place around a Mahogany camp. You know, when we were logging Mahogany and, and shipping them off to Europe, what took place, you know, around the Chica camp, you know, demonstrate how they used, how we used to harvest the, the sap from the bark of the, of the tree. Um, you know, reenactment of how, aside of course, we'd have our dances and all that stuff, but, you know, part, like for example, uh, one of the things that the first, the people were doing, the first settlers, including my great grandfather and my grand aunt, and, you know, they were actually making cocoon oil. That was actually a source an early source of income for the community, right? Making cocoon oil, and so we could actually have a demonstration you know, showing that process how cocoon oil is performed. It could even be a product, a local product. In closing, Mr. Garbutt spoke about why people should buy wood art from the Alton Haas site. This is the place. This is the place. I'm, I'm not saying that you can't get, I mean, a, you know, very good quality wood carving um, at good you know price in other parts of the country but the thing is this is the largest commercial center for wood carving in the country of Belize. We have more wood artists than any other single part of the country. For Belmopan Weekly, I'm DK Rasta.